Welcome to the channel and Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. Now in this video I'm going to do two things. I'm going to give you an overview of Nova's early 1900s Siberia map which was published on the 19th of June 2021 if you're watching this in the future and then as part of that overview we're going to take a slightly more in-depth look into his horse-drawn vehicle mods. There's several mods and I'll go through them as we as they crop up. Now, I want to emphasize that this is not the first part in a new series starting in the 1900s. This video is purely the result of the fact that I was originally going out this afternoon and it's absolutely pouring with rain. So I started just looking at Nova's new map because it does interest me because I'm very interested in the 1900s start. Then I thought, well, why not? Let's just make a video and I'll share it with you guys. So if this video seems a bit haphazard, it's down to the fact that I'm literally making up as I go along. There's no preparation. So that out of the way, let's get started. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just go through the steps of setting the map up for anyone who's not sure about uh, the process of getting back to the 1900s. First thing you do is you go in here, click new map, go across and got to find it. There we are. Described items is here and see we see early 1900 Siberia click here and then we come into here you can see it's a populated map which I think is quite important I've already set the game conditions to hard money to hard uh, we'll put the summer season back to um, disabled so we can see what we're doing and um, building fires we'll leave on frequent if we get if anything burns down that's irrelevant of course I've set global events to enable the start year is irrelevant, although what I would suggest is make sure you lock according to year. And then when you're ready, you just click the green arrow. And what will happen is the game will load. Now, what I will say is there are a lot of um, mods associated with this map. If you haven't subscribed to them all, what will happen is, is when the map loads in, you will get a message telling you that there are missing mods. And if you say ignore, what you'll hear is a series of explosions across the map as the buildings are removed. So if you do want to look at this map properly, make sure you subscribe to all the mods before you actually start the game. Now, once you've started the game and you're on the map, what first thing you want to do is drop a save and then quit out, quit back to the desktop. And uh, Nova's very kindly posted some links in the description for this map where which will take you to the location that will talk you through the process of setting the date back to 1900 and more importantly a link to the, the little program that actually does it and it's very straightforward as I say there is a very simple program you load in there what you do is you go and look for the save game that you've actually dropped um, click on that and then you go in and click on a file cover what it's called now in the lower box of the application you just change it to the whatever date you want to start in this case 1900s click save and then just what you do then is you just come back into the game and effectively it's just what i'm about to do now you can see i've got a 1900 start here and you just click here and you just click load and that's all there is to it so here we are we are on the map and i'll start by giving you an overview of the map it's a quite an interesting map and what you'll see is that we've got a single populated little village down here full of very unique features this is where we'll be focusing and then we've got a pretty flat area because of course it's Siberia and I think it's meant to represent the tundra and then over here is a customs post and if I zoom in very closely you will see that this is the modded customs post which gives it a bit more of a historical character here rather than the modern looking ones and i think the way this works is that what you do is you if you're building the map you place the customs post and then you place this over the top i think correct me if i'm wrong i'm not exactly too sure so that's done there now the map consists of a whole load of dirt roads that go all the way around the edge there's also a rail track here now one thing i will say about the rail track is that I've, I've been looking for old trains and the the oldest train I found is about 1930 so the rail track is going to be absolutely useless until the 1930s and if there's any modders happen to watch this video uh, I'd be very interested if, if anyone actually decides to come up with a train that's circa 1900 I mean there were some nice looking trains around in those days and I think if we could get a a series of trains from the period this would really make the 1900 start really come alive because then you could use the trains to move goods long distances and the wagons to deliver them locally 
Now, the one drawback with this map is the fact that all the gravel seems to be in the center here in this mountain range. Now, I don't know if that's deliberate or just accidental. What I will say is, is that the 1 million rubles will go a long way in this period for reasons which I'll explain going forward. So that's the map. I'm really impressed with the map. Um, and I think it could be quite fun to play on a little bit of a challenge. And what I'm going to do is let the game unpause the game now. And what you'll see is what Nova's built is a little village here. We've got a water mill here because obviously industries need power. And what, one thing I would suggest is that you're going to do this. Uh, tell some of them to go and work in it. And probably reduce the workforce down a little bit as well. Because you don't need a lot of power. Uh, so you can drop it right down to about five. Now, the village obviously has got a church. Around the back here, we've got a tiny little construction office, which has got a horse-drawn bulldozer and a horse-drawn excavator and a couple of dumpers. You can see the map actually starts with auto purchase on. I'm, I'm not going to turn that off. I mean, because I literally I'm just looking at this. Now, we've got a load of fields here, and there's actually a farm, a little miniature farm in here. And this farm's got a couple of covered holes, a couple of horse-drawn combines, and a draft horse. Now, when I first saw this, I thought, what on earth is going on here? Why are all these fields being sown? And of course, what this is actually drawing into is a mechanic which I, I can't ever recall using. That is actually allowing workers into the fields to do the sowing and harvesting. And I think that's quite well laid up, and I think it would be quite important for a 1900 start that what you're going to do is, is allow the workers to do a lot of the menial jobs. Now, if we move in closer here, so we've got the farm here. We've got a little rural bakery here, which is working quite quickly. It's been connected to a rural, a rural store here. And then in here, we've got a shop that sells everything, including electronics, <laughs> which is a little bit odd because there was no such thing as electronics in the 1900s. But I, I can imagine this just the way things have been set up. Now, the other thing I want to show you here is a horse feeder. This is the way your horses are fed. And they're actually fed crops. And, and now I must admit, I, I'm not exactly too sure how Nova's done this, but it's really ingenious. We come into the workshop, and if I come to gas stations, where is it? I can't find anything in here. Where is it? Gas station. What you'll see is that... The horse feeding station has an oil tank of one one ton of fuel and it takes crops and that to me that's quite intriguing and what i'm going to do is demonstrate that but one one thing before we leave i just want to show you a another building here that because it fits with the farm i'm not sure if i can really get it into here and it's actually under storage where is it storage i think it's on the end here You've got this tiny little stone silo here. It's, I think it's quite in keeping. Oops, I've got the auto purchase on. I don't want that on. Turn that off. Of course, I forgot all about that. Anyway, it did me a favor. So we've got this little stone silo here, which we can store crops in. And I don't think it takes much to build it. Let me just get it again. Now you can see all it needs is gravel and planks. Board, sorry, not planks. <laughs> We got that little uh, thing there. I think what I'm going to do is come to the gas station, turn off that, and it's residences. Click on the residence, and not that we're going to be building any residences, but getting back to horse feeding stations, if I come right across to here, you'll find that what we got on the border here is another horse feeding station. Now, the reason that the windmills here is that this still follows the rules of normal gas stations in the sense that it needs power, but it needs very little power. Now, one thing I've just realized I need to do in order to be able to do this demonstration, and I think this is, is going to be a good example of how you can bootstrap up this time period. If we come into storage and go back to here, if any of you follow my seven process series you think you're probably going to know what's going to happen now i'm going to build you very quickly here what we can do is just allocate 
You see, there's no resources allocated, but what we can do is just get... Oh, you've got auto-detect on. Just allocate you, speed the game up a little bit. And of course, as soon as you allocate the job, what you'll find sometime is you get workers will stroll out here. The other thing I'm also going to do while I'm thinking about it is put in a bus stop up on a really tiny, small bus platform. There is one in here that... So here it is, this bus stop here. What I'm going to do is just drop this in here. Put that in there. And we're going to put another one up just about here. Actually put it there. And again, what should happen is this should get detected by the construction office. Factor. I've got both of them in there now. So we've now got our little gravel detected thing in there. The bus stops will make sense in a little while. We can follow the road all the way back to the Trans Siberian interface. Now, what you'll see is we've got crops in here. We've got 14 tons of crops. Let me just put that there. I don't think we need that. Now, if I come in here and we buy a dumper, buy a two horse dumper because the single horse one is very slow. And if we come there, pick up the gravel and just fly over here, back over. Where is the our little gravel drop off? Gravel. Then if we just whip all the way back over here again, we get in very close. What you will see is we got the wind turbine there. I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see this. But if we put the Trans Siberia in there. And we come to here. We we'll zoom in fairly close. And if we kick this guy off, and what you'll see is he will come out here. I kind of slow the game up. What you'll see is this guy will come down here. No, he didn't draw enough power. I think very briefly the wind turbine provided a little bit of power to here. Click on the vehicle now, you'll see that he's fully fueled, but he consumed literally 0.1 tons of crops to fill up. And so what you've actually got is a, the ability to run vehicles without having to buy fuel. But there is a little bit of a catch to setting this up, and I'll try, see if I can demonstrate it. If we come into here. Oh, no, 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 we want mods, gas station, and got to find it. I think it's this one here. I think it, no, here is horse feeding station. Now, if we put the horse feeding station here, like that, and we're just going to build it, like that. And what you'll see, it's got absolutely no crops in here. It says without power supply because but this is in range of the wind turbine here you've got to have power as you, because that is the rules for gas stations we're going to do a manual purchase of 10 tons we got that there now now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to delete this road connection here like that and then i'm going to buy another little uh what we call it truck dumper and i'm just going to copy you put you there let the game run and just speed up a bit because these guys move very slowly of course mud roads gravel roads it doesn't make any difference they dump now, if you watch this guy he is going in the customs office he's not coming down to here simply because he does not recognize this as a fuel station and if you actually watch, I'm just going to let him come out. And then there's a bit of a bug here where they kind of come across down to this road here. I think that's the overlay. Just going to pause. I'm just going to let them go up. And you'll see that he's actually going, not going to go into the fueling station. And what I'm about to show you is something I picked up on uh, a response that Nova made. If we go into purchase now, 
go to manual purchase and you've, you've got to buy like 0.2 tons of fuel like that and what should happen now is that I, I no 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 he's just noticed to speed him up a little bit so quite literally just to get this to work what you've got to do is is manually buy a very tiny amount of fuel and say just to show you i mean but quite interestingly we show you the economy the imports you can see you, you've got to spend like 27 rubles on fuel to get this going but once it's actually working then this one actually runs quite well you can see again he's he's, he's literally wandered off with 0 0.1 um, tons of crops so so effectively by starting here you don't actually have to buy any fuel for your vehicles which is pretty cool actually i like the idea of that so we've now got these here i suppose we better stop everyone queuing up here oops get the view make sure did i do that one yep, so we got some workers waiting here now and our farm is going i think all our farms have been successfully slow um sown but of course they're all really small which is <laughs> completely impractical because i think i can't remember now they, they produce a pretty ridiculous amount of crops so but i mean it would be enough if you were starting out in 1900 with a small village which is what you would have to do and i think to be honest if you're doing a series start in here there's going to be a lot of grind in it and um, this and this is one of the reasons why i'm not rushing into doing my own series actually for the channel on starting in 1900 so we we should get the gravel here you can see all my messing around and this guy's finally arrived and of course if, if we wanted the if i get a storage so now if any of you follow my seven crosses series you'll be familiar with this one as well and this would be a storage there now what i want to do is talk a little bit about how you can go even lower and bootstrap up this economy even more because if we come down to here what you will see is you've actually got a farm let's see if we can find it we've got a tiny little farm here the farmstead yeah this is the farmstead that's down here see here see and i think you can attach a feeder to this farm so that you don't have to provide fuel to this i think what nova said is that you can put a farm i mean correct me if i'm wrong this is this is very much a straight out the gate type thing so you can build a farm like this and then i think what you can do is attach a and uh gas station and you can create add a horse feeding station to it like that and you can just well um, auto purchase these and they don't cost a lot of money and the impression i got is that if you do this combination and set this up with a power supply you can put a power supply in with the wind turbine Is it um, the power the power plant one? Nineteen thirty. Wow, that's big. And we can just drop in a, a little wind turbine here. And of course, one advantage of the wind turbines is that you can just drop them in. And of course, there's a good chance they're burned down, but the way it is, of course, we'll just prime this one with uh, a little bit of fuel and tons of fuel any downside is you have to put the factory link in there now i'm assuming that with this what you should be able to do is possibly feed any your horse-drawn vehicles in this farm correct me if i'm wrong that's the assumption that i've made so that's how you can set a farm up and also have it where this one this farm here has got fuel in it maybe if you if you put fuel into here you will have to uh buy fuel anyway let's 
Now, what we're going to do now is move on to, which I think is very intriguing. And if we come to here, and I've got to remember where it is now. I think it's vehicle production. Let me just see if I can find it. Production line. And we're going to put in a horse breeder. Yeah. This is a horse breeder and wagon workshop. Which again, you can see just needs gravel and boards. So, so this is effectively your vehicle production plant. Okay, we're just going to spend the money on to get it built. Now this is very interesting because what you will see is that what you've actually got is to, it says finished vehicles. You need a warehouse for props, fabric, and wood. But you've also got an import warehouse for plastics, mechanics, electrics, uh, electronics, and fabrics. The reason for this is the fact that that's the way vehicle production goes. But the way Nova's got over this is if we come into here and go to, I think it's factories, and we need this horse feeder converter. Yeah, like that. Mm. Don't, probably don't need that. Just get rid of it so it stays clear. And then we'll just build this and this. What you'll see in here is this takes crops and wood, and then it outputs tidy amounts of plastics, electric, on its steel, electronics, and mechanics. And I emphasise very tiny amounts. And what you need to do is deliver the crops to here but one thing I will show you we come over to here again and looks like these guys have had a little bit of refuel if we buy an open hole let's get a two horse open hole here and we'll pick you up there if we come back all the way over here what you'll find is that you can't assign it there. It tells not. You've got to assign it to the farm here. And then what you've got to do is tell it to pick up, so let's say for argument's sake, logs. Like that. So this building here, you can't actually deliver to directly. So it's like a, a factory with no access. So it has to be connected directly to the horse breeder and wagon guys. And what you can do is see what would we want want a fire truck okay let's build a fire truck and what we'll do is select here put it to build a fire truck you can see that to build the fire truck it still needs these resources so it doesn't use the crops and wood for the actual production of vehicles it uses it to produce the other items but you also see that you actually need to import fabric as well because this doesn't produce fabric it just produces the plastics electronics steels electronics and mechanics so effectively, you are producing the horse-drawn vehicles with um, crops and logs. So you can suppose the logic is that the crops raise the horses, and the uh, wood as wood is used for making the vehicles as well. Of course, I suppose in some ways you could say the steel is there, but I think that's purely down to the way the game mechanics work. But what I will do is we just set up a kind of auto purchase this time for this just to show you guys can see how it works All right, we'll do it for fabric as well and no 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 cancel uh, it's not that I mean what we want to need is an auto purchase for props and wood and a little bit of fabric and then we'll just come down here yeah and then he made a mistake there and what you will see is once we get some workers in here we should be able to do it. And what I need is a bus. Ugh. Okay, let me just bit quickly build a vehicle depot. Uh, road vehicle depot. I don't want the bus having to wander everywhere. Just to, I'm just going to knock quickly knock up a, and then we'll we'll buy a bus. Actually, we'll buy a couple of horse drawn buses. You can pick up there. Well, and then you can drop off. You should better drop off here, shouldn't you? And you can just drop in there. 
Okay, let's just copy. What we should do now is start to get some workers in here. And what you'll see is that this is producing these commodities. And if we come down here, you'll see that they're very small amounts coming in here. So every day we need 15 tons of crops and 7.5 tons of wood to get this working. I think it's got to build up to the minimum amount for here. It shouldn't take that long. And what will happen is we'll start producing a truck in here. And I think that's pretty awesome, actually. <laughs> if you really want to go life, real life, there's a couple of other buildings that you can use to make things look even realer. And probably going to sorry into mods. I think it's car dealer here. What you've got here is a horse merchant. Which you could actually hook on to here, couldn't you? Like that. So you could do that. And then what you've got here is someone can actually sell the horses. Now I don't know if you could you'd want to sell the carts, but of course one of the templates in here is that if you go to personal cars, you can actually get a riding horse. So you can be able to manufacture riding horses from here, although let me let's just have a look. Oops, no. Uh, why you would need plastics and electronics and fabric for a riding horse, I don't know, but that's the way the game's played. You can see we're actually starting to produce the truck. Um, I mean, maybe we'll, I'll let this run if I can, we can keep it going. So that's just to see whether <laughs> it, the the wagon ends up in there. And of course, if you're going to have riding horses, you're going to need a parking lot. And I can never remember where the parking lots are. Where are they? parking lot what you'll see is we've we've actually they're actually called horse stables so what you could do is quite quite happily put a stable down here so we just let it get in there and again we just build this out like that and you can see we get a horse you can put it in here all the ho all the owners can buy their horses or whatever it is from the dealers obviously there's lots of people wanting to buy a horse <laughs> and then so for the, so if you really wanted to make this map look realistic around the 1900s you get a, a, a couple of stables round near buildings and then people can use horses to travel out and around and i think that might be partly behind the thinking that nova made with having this out here because what you could do is if you've got your gravel quarries out there and you're going to get your people out there in the quarry hands excavating, which is what they can do, um, you can get them to ride out there by horse. It must be. It took me a long time to find this bus stop and I'm really glad that this bus stop's here. So we'll just see. We're, we're kind of getting there. No engineers. See, we've got no edu educated people, so, which is a bit of a problem. Um, because we've got no school or anything in here building here we have to bring in some kind of educated people until we got our school going so even starting in the 1900s you would still need a, a university to get to keep the game in balance let's just get rid of that i mean i'd like to get this finished so we got one engineer here probably could do with uh, just reducing that down oops that we don't, don't need vast numbers of workers here of course we only need five workers here we've got a little farm here and if we just go over here you see because these are small crops <laughs> they're grown away pretty quickly actually uh, i mean i think everyone's getting a bit ha unhappy actually so yeah oh, i don't know the ha happiness isn't that bad we've been having a few children um, we've got a few escapees but that's understandable because what they complain about no culture no sport kindergarten schools no, low education level yeah because there's no school there we go there's our little wagons back with some forwards 
delivering workers up to here. They're all working very, very hard. And I think that covers us. What I'd like to do is just finish this. Now, while we're waiting for this to finish, because I've, I've got a feeling that what will happen is, is when the, the car is finished, it will drop in this yard here. It won't go into there. Actually, this just set up a riding horse behind there. And while that, while we're waiting for that to be built, I'm just going to kind of talk a little bit about the actual 1900 start. And I'll be completely honest, I, I would really love to do a 1900 start, but it would have to be a very slow time series because it's going to take a long time to bootstrap up your economy especially as there's still quite a lot of gaps in the availability of vehicles and probably the biggest one is trains oh, I'll, I'll just do it actually let's just put in here i think i've got a rail yard here and it's just coming to here where is it railroad depot that's it there if we put in a train depot here it's gonna cost a little bit of money but who cares and um, we'll just pay for it in dollars We've got a train depot here and all we've got at the moment is box cars <laughs> and that's and the cement truck so we've got absolutely no trains to run on this line which considering this is 1900 i would have thought there'd be at least a train available now i'm not don't want to come across as being very negative because i know that this is date is well away from the proper start date so i can't blame the devs in fact i'm amazed that they're They've been able to support this type of start anyway. And what I've found is the earliest coal train is somewhere around 1930, I think it is. And the other thing I wouldn't mind seeing is this, if, if Nova's been able to do this with the feeding horse-drawn trucks, I do wonder whether is there a way that that could be done with, with coal. I mean, I mean, Nova obviously has the secret, and I, if he wants to keep it secret how he's done it, that's up to him. But I think it'd be really awesome if somehow you could get a, a train equivalent to this, so that instead of putting crops in, you actually provide coal, and somehow that gets turned into fuel for a steam train. And then, of course, what we really would need is a, is a steam train. I mean, it'd be really great to see some really old-fashioned steam trains running along the map here. Anyway, I'm kind of getting a little bit digressed here. And, oh, look at that. And then we got our first... Uh, so we need now is a fire station for our little truck here. Have we got horses already? No, 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 it can't be. That must be part of the the look. Well, the horse is nearly there. And we'll just finish off the horse. It's it's the gap with the trains that's one of the reasons why I haven't... Re I didn't want to start in 1900 and I opted for 1947 my seven crosses but at the same time there's part of me that would really love to start in the 1900s so let me just get in here and it looks like we've got our first horse okay someone bought one wait where's my horse gone we've got our first horse he's just got nowhere to take it so let me just give him somewhere to a uh, parking lot. I never find parking lots here. Then we'll just put one in here. One of our friend is. Oh, look, he's been out and about. <laughs> I suppose he could go somewhere with his horse. Maybe he just went out for a quick ride. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. I think I've covered everything I, I would like to cover in this video. I'm, if I've missed anything out, apologies, because I've got no cue sheet in front of me, which is what I would normally make up for a normal start video. And what can I say? I really do like this map by Nova. I think he's really onto something. The only possible issue is the gravel and it would probably pay to sort the resources out as well so i think what what's actually happened is these this is, is a random default spread so there's probably a little bit more thought needs to be going into the resources 
and I really like the idea of a 1900 start and I'd be very interested if in if any of you are planning on starting a 1900 start and probably more importantly whether you'd like to see one although that comes with the following caveats probably the most important caveat is that a 1900 start will be incredibly slow and it's going to take a long time to make any progress the second one is the gaps of the vehicles what i'd have to do is go all the way through and find out when when certain types of vehicles appear and probably more importantly i i, I don't think a 1900 start is right if you haven't got at least a very slow basic train with some very slow basic live um, rolling stock in mean, a box car i mean i mean i would expect at least a, a uh, at least one passenger track wagon and of course what would be great if it was a coal-fired um, train to go with it so if there's any of you guys out there who fill up to the challenge of producing some kind of trains starting in about 1900 1890s running through to give a little bit of flavor to this map and i think i'd be really up to it and i think that is about it hope you enjoyed this video hope you found it interesting any uh, opinions feel free to chuck it in the comments and we'll have a bit of a chat about it any ideas about what is required to make this 1900 very realistic because because then if you are going to start in the 1900s it's in order to compensate for the very slow pace you're gonna it's gonna have to have a, an element of role play in it as well um if, if any of you are interested in seeing a 1900 series or if you're starting your own feel free to check it in the comments as well something else that's just suddenly occurred to me is this does this have a potential for a hard mode start but specifically orientated towards the 1900s not the normal hard mode start because what you could do is literally start with a tiny village and bootstrap everything up and have a very early condition that you've got to start producing your own coarse drawn vehicles but maybe that could be an option anyway i'm getting distracted this is where i'm gonna leave it hope you enjoyed the video and until next time whatever you do enjoy your gaming